What's up guys, my name is David Sawyers and today we're going to be talking about something that I wanted to talk about for a long time now. And that is being able to move all production to Linux. And I'd like to say that I've done it. I have actually moved everything to Linux. That I can stay in Linux, make content, render it, and upload it without ever switching back to Windows. The only time I've ever switched back to Windows this entire week, I think, was to play a game with my friend. And that was it. And I'm proud to say that because I feel like for a long time now I've been dependent on Windows in the, the fact that I've, I've had to either render with Sony Vegas Pro. I didn't have to, but I felt comfortable in so rendering with Sony Vegas Pro or making a photo, making the thumbnail in Photoshop. Not to say that I won't go back to use Photoshop since I, I, I'm getting it from my school. So being able to um, do that stuff is still going to be it's like useful, but being able to stay here like a hundred percent of the time now I don't even have to go staying here and the applications I'm gonna use I'm gonna go through them today and I've made separate videos on most of them already I yeah, I think all of them I made a separate video at least one time in the past or recently as well and all these programs are what make my content possible literally this is why my content exists and it's all basic they're all free applications it's all open source. I think most of it's open source. I think, yeah, I don't think anything's closed source in the in these tool sets I'm going to be showing. And I'm really happy to say that that I only need the tools, this uh, micro, oh god, this microphone and my webcam, and I can basically render, record, and do everything with free applications. And I'm proud to say that. That's really that's a, that's a thing I was hoping for. So the first application we'll go through is a, a video I've made before. Actually, I'll put, I'll make an annotation to that video. It was okay. Um, it's called Kenden Live, and Kenden Live, at the time was I, I, I really I at the time I made the video, I used it for a little bit, and then I went back to Sony Vegas Pro. But then I said I gotta get into it to the point where I need to, and I went really in depth, more in depth than I did at the time of the video, and I found even better settings, and maybe they even updated it a little bit. Now, one thing I love to do with Sony Vegas Pro, and I, I should have realized it would have this in the monitor setting, where you could, I have two monitors, right? So I have a monitor to my right, or to my left, because of the invert, oh, whatever. So it's to my right in real life, but to your left, okay. Um, so uh, what this allows you to do right here is switch monitors. So I can switch to that screen, and it will full screen when I'm rendering. And the one thing that I need to do, and I'll pull in a video, from later, from earlier today. I don't know if this is a rendered video yet or whatever this is, and we'll find it somewhere. Uh, no, it's trying to open a project. Um, open. I'm still trying to open a project. Uh, let's just open it from uh, Thunar. There it is. Okay, so um, let's open. Say we want to open the previous video, which I don't know why I named Cats. Don't question it. I just named it something totally random. So, I, I the only thing I ever need to do in a video or in editing software usually is edit mistakes out so all I need to do is be able to see the uh, audio how the audio waves form so if I, hear, if I hear a stutter in the recording I go deep I go really close in I go cut and cut and wherever it it, I, it sounds good and I delete that's it that's really all you, I need to do in photo and video editing I don't need to do anything more than getting mistakes out or something I didn't like I said and fixing it and making my videos sound coherent and professional. That's all I need to do, and that's what Kenyon Live offers. And the rendering is fantastic. It, the, the quality of the previous video is amazing. I, I was able to render. I use H.264 ACC with a 8,000 video bit rate with a uh, 256 uh, audio bit rate as well. And the audio and um, was amazing. And I think I even did a two a two bypass. And I have it on uh, using five threads. So it's using five of the CPU threads. And I'm able to render in fantastic quality. So being able to render a video in a free software in HD with 1080p quality, with amazing quality, is fantastic and with a fantastic bit rate. The one thing that um, I had problems with when I first got this microphone, uh, I didn't understand like audio bit rates at the time. And that was recently considering everything. And uh, at the time, I didn't understand like why was the microphone sounding very tinny. It sounded very tinny at low bit rates, so it sounds very tinny at 192, 168, and um, unbelievably tinny at 128. So I had to raise the bit rate, and I was raising it in previous videos like to 320, just to make the bit to make this sound less tinny and to make it have more bass. And I prefer that in how I how my how I think my voice sounds and being able to hear myself. One thing about making videos is getting over what you hear what hearing yourself and that's why I wear headphones is because I'm um, I'm listening live to what my voice sounds like and that helps with me hearing my mistakes 
Now, the um. So now let's look at my photo editor. Um, the photo editor I use now, it's not a photo editor. Let me correct myself before anyone else corrects me. It's a, a photo manipulation tool, photo creation tool called Krita. And I was actually told by one of the developers in the comments of um, this video, what is Krita, um, the best uh, um, photo creation tool for Linux. And I was schooled by a developer, which I got to give him credit. That was kind of funny. I saw that. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And I fixed it. But um, so Krita is a fantastic tool, which you can make pictures and you can make images if you have like a Wacom tablet, a drawing tablet, you can make fantastic, beautiful pictures with this. But for my needs, I make more of uh, thumbnails. I make thumbnails. That's all I need to make in a photo editor. Usually I don't really do any other thing, photo editing than this. And this is the thumbnail from the last video. What is Conky? Uh, customization to the next level. And I have a little picture of Conky. Don't know why the text separated it in weird places. It's probably a, a font problem, but I left it alone. It's okay. I can deal with that. But, um, being able to do multiple things. The previous video that I made was about uh, Pixeluvo and Pinta. And those were really good things. But uh, Pixeluvo, which was similar, not really similar to uh, Krita at all, but was, you were able to do limited things. And you were limited. It wasn't, open, well, it was open source, but you, you had to buy it. You couldn't do 1920 by you couldn't do 1920 by 1080 resolution images without purchasing it for like 30 bucks, which is okay. I don't have I can't complain about that. Buying something is okay, but it wasn't for me, and the tool set was too limited. But here we have some amazing tool sets. I'm able to get my logo in. So as I was saying before, I got really interrupted by my dog screaming at the top of his lungs. Um, the other uh, photo editor, photo manipulation tools. Uh, um, Pinta and uh, Pixeluvo, they were good. They were really good. Pinta had some other things that I didn't really like about it. It was more like paint, and I couldn't really do what I needed to do. I couldn't make the layers were weird. It's awkward. I, I, I it's very specific how I needed to be, and it's got to be like Photoshop. I hate to say it, because Photoshop has really um, uh, um, set the standard on how I need to, how to how the workflow has to go. And Photoshop has set that standard, and doing that, I'd probably just ruin the focus on the camera. But um, in Photoshop and Adobe doing that, I need to f f um, software that are kind of similar. And Krita uh, fills that need. Next would be, uh, next would be uh, what I record with. And what I record with is OBS. I, I, I used to previously record before I got a webcam, before I got the uh, Logitech C920. I used to use um, Simple Screen Recorder. And Simple Screen Recorder is fantastic. I gotta say, it's one of the best screen recorders you could ever use. It's fantastic. It's utterly amazing. You pick your audio interface. If you use an analog microphone like me or whatever microphone you're using, you uh, pick your Kodak. I pick uh, ECC 256, best resolute, best quality, best bit rate, like I'm doing right now. I use I use .mov uh, surprisingly because of um, image quality. Fantastic image quality for .mov, better than I felt like uh, MP4 was for at least simple screen recorder. And you get a nice preview, and you're able to go. The one thing with Inception, I love that. Oh yay! Well, that's going on for uh, that's going on for infinity. Great, we just opened a warp in time. Um, no, but I I couldn't do. This is only gonna record the desktop, which is it's fine. But you need a webcam now because I have the webcam and I want to use it that I bought it. So I switched to OBS and OBS. Um, I, I wonder how I can do this without making Inception. I don't think I can. Uh, can I make a new window? Let's see. Oh yes, I can. That's fantastic. I wonder if I ruined the recording and doing that. Oh, we'll figure it out. Oh, um, uh, I don't know. Um, whatever. We're still getting the Inception, but we won't have my face. Um, so what this is, and we haven't started recording, and I'll just, uh, no, I will remove my devices and then when I restart it. Um, so what, what OBS gives, lets me do, and I'll go into settings of OBS and open broadcasting software, I'm able to, uh, have a video bitrate, my audio bitrate set, I should probably up that, but it's fine. Um, it's perfectly fine with rendering in Kenden, uh, in Kenden Live. I have my, uh, open, we're using OpenGL to render, 1080p. And for the limited settings that this is a um, very, it's like not officially done yet for um, OBS for Linux. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, it's like you get it off the AUR. It's like a, a maintainer. It's like built from source and they put it on the AUR. So it's not really official yet. It's not, it's official by uh, OBS, but it's not really officially released yet. So it has like weird, it's like a beta. So I, I, I was able to get that and using it's fantastic. And as you can see, it works really, really well. Uh, without it, I, I really couldn't be able to do anything. And uh, yeah, that's my production. I use three main programs, open broadcasting software, uh, Kenden Live, and Krita. Those are my three go-to tools to make my content how it is, making everything how it is. And 
I gotta say, it's fantastic, and and it's fantastic being able to move all production to Linux. It, it makes me feel good that I'm able to say that, and it's fantastic because I can just do everything here with free open source tools and making it amazing. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you hear yelling in the background, that's my little brother, and he's just bad at a hell crazy. So. What do you think about the tools that I use for my production in uh, Linux? And uh, if you use pr tools in Linux as well, like production tools, link, link them in the comments below and I'll message you back. As always, please rate, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.